good afternoon everybody thank you organizers and the office bearers of norzone or public association for allowing me to speak on this occasion i am speaking on mesclage technique as we understand it today uh, this is an important quote that has been quoted by mesclage in his first paper that a very important principle of organization is that vital capacity requires an envelope which protects it from the external elements and the envelope may box baby box skin or shell all that is living should be wrapped up we know that this has been an accidental finding in the history of orthopedics wherein the original author merely intended to hold the space to receive the bone graft but eventually it became a very important technique and a great tool in dealing with selected orthopedic problems this basically is an induced membrane technique relatively new in orthopedics involving two stages and aimed at reconstructing segmental bone defects in the first stage the pathology is removed the bone is stabilized and resultant void is filled with a spacer and a time is given for the spacer to elicit a local foreign body cascade and an induced membra membrane by membrane is formed around that spacer which is then ready for the second stage procedure in the second stage the membrane is opened the spacer is removed and the cavity thus formed is filled with morselized autologous bone graft and most defects they heal by 8 to 12 months biological membrane is at the heart of uh, mesclage technique and as we know that without a membrane a membrane without bone graft is inefficient and bone graft without membrane there will be rapid resorption so the combination of bone graft with a preserved membrane results in bone segment reconstruction this has been a hot topic in orthopedics and as we can see from this graph that number of publications has steadily increased over a period of time peaking at around 2017 and now we have even today many publications coming on this topic with new modifications being added and the scope the original author basically st started with traumatic bone defects and infections but now the scope has increased to non unions joint fusions tumors and congenital pseudoarthrosis the spacer there has been a debate and ongoing studies around the spacer what type of spacer should be used in fact any foreign body can induce membrane by local tissue irritation but bone cement most commonly used spacer titanium is another viable option and polypropylene disposable syringes have also been utilized advantages of pmma is that it's easy and time tested moldable easy to remove at the second stage and the surface microrugosity makes cement more irritating than titanium hence better membrane is induced apart from membrane second important thing is the graft how to fill the void once we remove the graft uh, the spacer what type of graft we used so optimal graft material is autologous morselized cancellous bone graft which has macroporosity and biological properties autologous cortical cancellous graft is another option only if cancellous content is more than the cortical content rea harvest is effective only when mixed with cancellous bone graft and in extensive reconstruction of femur and humerus where we need enhanced mechanical stability and uh, we need to address reduced resorption fibular strut with cancellous bone graft has also been utilized there has been no effect uh, benefit benefit of adding bone substitute in synthetic graft factors and in fact may be counterproductive although no comparative studies are available to contest this claim in infected non unions we have used and it is being used bone cement is being used with spacer and antibiotics they do alter the membrane morphology and thickness however no effect on membrane biotity has been found and in the z and wang have concluded that more new bone formation 
with low dose of vancomycin is found in comparison to higher concentration of vancomycin. So there's a tendency to use lower concentration of antibiotics in an infected, uh, infected environment. There has been much debate on timing of second stage. Generally, four to eight weeks is the recommended time when we are incise the membrane, remove the spacer, and carry out the bone grafting. However, there has been delay in clinical settings. It depends on many factors. Actual interval ranges from four to 96 weeks in literature. It has been seen that membrane maintains osteogenic potential to stem cells even after late grafting, as late as six months. And there's no, no study has demonstrated a clear correlation between increased membrane maturation or age and worsening of outcome. And emerging clinical evidence suggests that time alone is not a reliable measure of membrane readiness. How effective has been mesclase induced membrane technique? Mesclase initial series that involved 35 patients, he claimed to have res uh, resulted in 100% non-unions. And despite the bone defects varying widely in length and injury, he reported almost 100% results with this technique. A meta-analysis by me M et al. in 2020, involving 41 studies and 680 fractures, around 92% of fractures consolidated. Another study by Krager et al. involving 84 post-traumatic lung defects with a size varying from 2 to 23 centimeters. Union has been achieved in 76% of cases. The only study that, in fact, labeled as an ineffective method of treating infected non-unions by was Morris et al. in 2017, wherein he achieved only five cases of union. Most of the cases he was not able to achieve union. So even he was of the opinion that adequate initial debridement is important for uh, success of this technique. Almost there is a consensus about use of implant. In a non-infective setting, internal fixation is the implant of choice. But in case of infected cases, surgeon has to decide depending on the kind of environment he has been able to create by primary debridement. Internal and, internal and external fixation can be used according to the surgeon's preference and the amount of de initial debridement he has been able to achieve. Even small bones, this has been very effective. We have also used this in metacarpals and metatarsal fractures. There have been mo uh, published modifications in uh, mesclase induced membrane technique, like what type of bone graft can be used? Can we have some substitutes? Can we use cortical bone instead of cancellous bone? Can we do one stage procedure? Can we decrease the uh, spacing time between the two procedures? In few case reports, it has been reported that allograft from bone banks is used in second stage with or without autograft, and good result has been achieved in children. And in few case reports, non-vascularized fibular strut has been used instead of cancellous bone graft in stage two, and union has been, has been achieved successfully. When we have used fibular strut in case of a, a pseudoarthrosis in a child, where two procedures previously had failed, but we were able to use fibular strut with complete union. One stage procedure using synthetic biomembrane. Verbico et al. published this study in 2020 in the European Journal of Trauma and Emergency Surgery, wherein they use a rat model only in non-infected cases, utilizing human acellular dermis with internal fixation, and they claim that this could be the answer for avoiding sex stage procedure in mesclase, but it is still in rat models. It has not been reproduced yet. The acute mesclase technique. Hatashita et al. successfully treated seven patients of open lower limb long bone fractures, wherein they primarily do the procedure, putting the spacer. They do uh, debridement and even add flap at the same, same stage. And then they come back at six to eight weeks and fill in that graft with, with the bone graft. Kang et al. also published in 2020 15 cases of Gustav Anderson type 3B fractures, wherein they do a primary debridement, put in a spacer, internal fixation, and if there is a skin defect, they do the primary flap. 
coverage at the same time. And then they go back after six to eight weeks to complete the rest of the procedure. And they noted no major complications. Three-dimensional printing assisted masculine technique has also been reported in literature to address calcaneal defects. So there has been a lot of innovation going from the original technique. So this is, we can conclude that masculine induced membrane technique is not the only method. It is one of the methods of treating bone defects and infected non-unions and can be utilized in a select situation depending on the condition and depending on the surgeon expertise. Thank you so much.